Hello and welcome to GPTV on the most beautiful Tuesday, the 9th of May. My name's Philip Kingston. I'm Gary Peer. And Gary, uh, you know, they say if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck. It is a duck. Yep. So the question is, is it winter? Because it was pretty cool out there on the weekend, just quietly. You know, it's very Melbourne. We're looking outside now at some sunshine. There's some rain predicted, Philip. I know we had the auction at Craddock Avenue. It was in sunshine. An hour earlier, we were freezing cold in the rain. That's Melbourne, folks. If you don't like the weather, just hang around an hour or so and it will change. I was doing auctions inside. I was doing auctions outside. Yep. Um, but I did release this new um, puffer vest yeah, that no, I've what, got. What's that? It looks like a bit... Almost like you're going to the snow or something for the weekend. Well, it, it, it I've got like to tell you, you ran out of clothes and you just shoved it on and thought, am I going to Mount Buller this week? Am I going to stand outside, Gary, in the winter? Yep. You know, we're not as young as we used to be. So That's for sure. I've got this little puffer yep. vest that sits yep. underneath. And I thought yep. it looked quite, quite smart. Uh, but it, boy, it kept me warm. Didn't get a lot of love, though, when you asked the crowd at Spring Road. What do you think about this? It was kind of a bit of a quiet. Do you know, you know it's crowd, amazing. Yeah. That auction in Spring Road, yeah. like normally when you sell single fronted houses, Yep. You get quite a cool, happy crowd. Yep, yep. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of love no. happening at that auction for no, me, I no, didn't no, think. No, it was almost like, you know, I don't know if it was late in the afternoon. I mean, it was a good auction. It went well, sold well. Well sold done to the well, vendors. Yeah. Congratulations. But they yeah, were happy. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a happy street with a beautiful strip in the middle, but no one was bidding from that strip. But, you know, it was almost like you... It's almost like you, I don't know, what happened? Know. Do you, do you know run what, over somebody you know, on the way to the auction like, or something? You know what it's like. What happened, yeah. You meet somebody, right? Yeah. And... You want to talk to them, yeah, and you know they're they're well dressed, yep. they're attractive, yep. they've got a friendly face, yes. and then you start talking to them, yeah, and their and feet go no, that no, way. No, no, <laughs> they, no, no they, they start talking to you, and their breath is terrible. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. So you know, you just like you yeah. kind of lean back, and all you want to do yeah. is find somebody else to talk and to. And were you that, that person? Well, that's <laughs> that was how you were. That's, and I keep offering you those mints, <laughs> and you won't have me. You keep saying that those mints of mine uh, smell like something out of the gym or something because they've got that you know that uh, special flavour. Gary. Yeah sucks these mints oh, they're great, aren't they? that are a combination of <laughs> mothballs <laughs> and deep heat. So if you, can imagine, if, you can imagine, if you can imagine, if you can imagine mothball, deep heat, mix it in 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 a in a in a whatever yeah. that mixy thing yeah. is, okay. and mix that up, and then yep. suck that lolly. Yep. You smell yep. like. Yep. My grandmother's old shoes. And tell me, who did the auction spin rate? Was it me or was it you? I think it might have been you. I don't know. I'm, I had no problem with the connection. Anyway, it was funny that we both picked that up, isn't it? Yeah. But it was just a weird yeah, sort of... Sometimes the, sometimes the energy yeah. is... Like you can have... Viewers, it's really interesting. You can have five properties, one after the other. Yep. Um, and they can be similar properties. Yeah. But the crowd energy can be completely different. It's and yet, you know, you did a great job. You sold it well. The bidder was lovely. The people that bought it were delightful. The other yeah. bidders were nice. You had some people there that were at an auction earlier. But, you know, there was just this dark cloud across the road. I'll tell you the funniest. Well, yeah. I thought it was funny anyway. So um, there is this couple standing to my right yes. with the cutest little boy. Yes. Cutest little boy. Sweet this little kid and he's watching me he's 18 months old or something yep. angelic so i said to the viewers so to, said to the parents you know you've got the most beautiful little boy i'm going to get him a gift from the car so yes. i went to the car and of course the only thing that i've got is these little bottles these little mini bottles of whiskey mccallum 12 year old whiskey yeah with a little gary peer and associates yeah. ribbon around it what's wrong with that so so <laughs> i went and gave the, the the little bottle of whiskey to the little kid yeah now normally gary because i've, I've yeah. done it before normally it gets a laugh yeah well like I've got to tell you, they looked at me like I was some weird pedo. If, <laughs> if that's I right. could say yeah. that on no, GPTV. No, I think, I think the problem was when the kid drank all that bottle was on the ground and like the emergency <laughs> services came. I think that might have had something to do with the uh, vibe of the Some, auction field. Sometimes, yeah. Gary, our yeah. humour yeah. is lost yeah, on the general lost. public. It, it, it is lost. Never mind. Look, you know, uh, <laughs> things have changed in the last week, Philip, because we now are officially the subjects, the royal subjects, uh, or yes. the subjects of the yes. royal family. Um I've never seen anything longer than that coronation. I mean, the that King's is like... King's coronation. You know, now I know why they named like Coronation Street. The series went so long because anything to do with coronation, Phil, just goes on and on and on. I mean, that is the longest thing. And I mean, you have a little patience. I have a little bit more patience than you, but... How long is the coronation for? And and then, you know, there's all of this millions and millions of dollars goes into this, you know, paying homage and honouring uh, King Charles. I don't have no problem with King Charles, although I saw a funny meme the other day that said, uh, can we be forgiven by saying every time we say King Charles, saying the word cavalier afterwards because of the King Charles cavalier. Yep. Uh, but, um, Phil, you know, all this money went in, yet at the end the commentary says, well, he's there 
as our servant. But I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Servant did, that was spent not, that much. Did not look like didn't feel like he was serving any of us when we spent all those millions of dollars and well, you know, we, hundreds we, we of didn't, billions. We didn't well, spend we that. Pay, don't, do we pay anything no, towards no, that? No. I don't believe so. Having said that, apparently it cost fifty million pounds, yeah. which yeah. Uh, there's no chance that only cost fifty million no, pounds. I reckon, just no, quietly, I, sort of sure uh, I reckon fifty million pounds but was the deposit hey, on booking the cathedral. Hang on, right? They might, they might have got a discount for cash fill. You never know. It's possible. Even if it cost a hundred million pounds, right? Yep. Two billion people watch yep. that worldwide, yep. which apparently is more people than watch yep. GPTV. I don't right? believe that. Right? Yeah. But <laughs> if you think about it, if two billion people yep. watched an advertisement for London, because yep. that's essentially what it is, yep. then that is the greatest investment. Yeah, possibly That is so. a massive investment yep. because uh, as the cynic that I am and as the Republican that I am, uh, there is no question, I believe, the royal family exists mainly for English tourism. Because it's a maybe, massive, maybe it's so. a massive draw cut. Might and it's a, poured and in rain, and, and, and like it's, it always and does. And it's a great yeah. draw cut. But a couple of little things that we all pointed out yeah. and a couple of things that are going a bit viral on, um, on social media is... Apparently, the woman that stole the show yes. is the woman that held the sword. Oh, is that right? right? I didn't so, say that. Yeah. so she's been trending. She's been trending on Twitter because apparently it's very heavy, and she actually had to train to hold it because she held it like for two hours. Really? Right. So she's trending a little bit. The other thing that's trending, and we should put this up on screen because it's fabulous, is you know, let's be clear. Harry's not the favourite no, son, the without son. any question. Well, is, is he the son at all? That's so, the other well, thing. that's we another, that. that's oh, another yeah. thing. But they sat him behind Princess Margaret yeah. with the hat, right? Yep. So did you see that? I so, didn't notice that. Go on, so yeah. Princess Margaret wore yeah. a hat yeah. with this quite large feathery thing on top. Yeah. So when the cameras went to Prince Harry, all you see was is Prince Mar Princess Margaret hat. with this hat. And yeah. as a number of the commenters, commentators were saying that this production yep. was micromanaged down to the last you know millimeter. I, I, I just want so to, the question is, did they just was that an accident? I don't think look, so. I want to call out to Prince Harry and I just want to say to you, look, I know how you feel because I was at the footy at Marvel and someone had a pom pom, right? Yeah. And, and I couldn't see when Cripps took a great mark. So I know how you feel. You know, yeah, it was very, yeah. very disappointing. I, I think it would be exactly I relate the same. It would be exactly yeah. your feeling yeah. about the pom pom would yeah. be exactly his feeling yeah. about same, the same sort of thing. Yeah, same no, sort of thing. So we understand. We're on the same page. Gary, um, can, H. can yeah. we just drift okay. back somehow yeah, to property? Because yeah. it is a property show. Oh, well, um, we had some commentary from, from, uh, from Chris. Uh, you know, we had a really long rambling edition last week. And, Was it? And Chris said, oh, yeah. And he said, great video, informative, informative it is, casual, and to the point. Well, I don't know if we're so to the point, Chris, but we really appreciate so was that, writing it. Was that it. some positive feedback? Was yeah, it? I think okay. it was. Well, it wasn't Brilliant. the usual Thanks, abuse Chris. with all the expletives that we get. But, so and we don't really get many of them. Well, occasionally we do. Or sometimes, quite, quite often. Probably all, yeah, all, all the time, really think about anyway it's, it's, Chris, coming, um, it's coming in it's now, coming now. Yeah, exactly. see live twitter yeah, get off, there, get off. Yeah. Uh, anyway so thanks for that chris uh phil we did have a busy weekend we, we had did. a bit of run with we, we rain we had a bit of sunshine we had a bit of everything um and um your team won my team lost unfortunately the demons yeah, won Carl, carlton um, yeah. uh, really started with a bang gary and yep. uh really fizzled out yeah. really fizzled, fizzled out. out i'm just having a quick can we get back to real estate though yeah because, let's do um, that, phil. we're 77 percent clearance which is pretty much in line with the industry yeah, yeah. Uh, it was all around that which um, is still a strong market, Phil. Look, Gary, it's a very good market. And yep. sorry, viewers, I'm looking down because I'm looking at the domain app now, uh, going to auction results. Yep. Um, the auction results, I think, are seriously skewed, right? Because um, the domain auction results are showing a 76% clearance, right? Yep. yep. But work this out. They go, there were 644 auctions scheduled. Yep. There were 490 reported. So only 490 of the 644 were reported. Wow. And then they say seven, the, the sold was 370, withdrawn was 32, passed in 88. But if the auction schedule was 644 and the sold properties were 370, yep. that is not 76% guarantee. No, the not. clearance rate really is a lot lower so, in the industry. So what you're saying Ours, is, though, yeah. are Legit legitimate. Yeah. Because as the kids say, legitness. Yeah. Well, is there a word, legitness? No, there's no. Uh, but I like it. But, but cool. our, when yeah. we report our auction results, viewers, there's no ifs or buts or no. non-reported. Ours are absolutely factual. Oh, no. Sometimes we non-report when it's really and, low. And I just cannot see and yeah. I cannot understand uh, how that clearance rate can possibly add up. 
because it does Well, doesn't. Phil, you'll have to find someone far smarter than you that uh, can understand a data. data scientist, yeah, Data perhaps. scientist, we need yep. to get one of those yeah. in, Phil. Uh, 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 what, what's the, the what's the, that, that profession where they analyse... Um, for insurance claims, you know, you've got actuaries. An actuary. An Thank actuary. you, Gary. We need an actuary. We need Actually, an actuary. we need an actuary. Yeah. yeah. They're smart. I mean, no doubt you couldn't even remember what their name is because they're so smart that people like us struggle to even know what they're called because that's how smart they are. If there's any actuaries watching, yeah. we'd love you to. Uh, like, do, do you think an actuary do, would watch do, this we, show? Like, they, they don't become smart by watching any nonsense. actuaries like watching, yeah. we would like you to yeah. do some work pro bono, of course. Yeah, uh, actuaries, step forward. So if there's one actuary that's watching this, can you just write in and tell us who you are? Because I'd love to think that there's someone that smart. They might have just had nothing to do, or they might be quite not, a not quite right actuary, Phil, if they're tuned into this program. So, Phil, let's kick off some of our results for the week. We had a busy week, and it didn't only happen on the weekend, but it happened midweek. Uh, let's talk about what everyone's talking about. It's gone viral. Everyone's on about it, talking about it. Can't believe it. Uh, the result of the commercial auction that was sold together with uh, co-agents Gross Waddell in Kingsway, Glen Waverley. Before we do so, do you yeah. mind if I just quickly talk about the latest episode, the latest issue, issue number 10 of the peer review? You know, we uh, talked about this last week. The latest episode? Yeah, I think did, did I actually hold it up and go, Tully Roth from Tully Roth Designs is on the front I cover? Th I think you may have, but that's okay. If you, you haven't know. received a copy, yeah. you can drop in at any of our offices and pick it up, or you can send us an email, ideas at garypeer.com.au, and we'll put you on the mailing list. It comes out once a quarter. Four editions a year keeps you up to date with what's going on in uh, real estate. So back to King's Way game. Yeah, actuaries love that. My uh, Lord yeah. King's lordy, Way. Lordy, lordy, lordy. It's all been what, happening. And I, I reckon, do you reckon there's a connection between the name of the street and the fact that there's a coronation this week? Um, because it was the King's Way, wasn't it? It was. I've, I've got to tell you that the that. King's yeah. Way is to sell well over reserve. That's yeah, what exactly Charles right. stands for. Exactly he stands right. for well in excess of reserve. results, yeah. Uh, so if Charles can perform, if his King's Way is as well as you did as an auctioneer in King's Way in Glen Waverley and that Simon Rodolnik and the team at Ross Waddell did, well, how about this property, Phil? Uh, expected to get somewhere in the threes, was quoted in the threes. Around reserve three. Was, a reserve was like three yep. um, and sold for... Five million and fifteen thousand. So viewers, just an interesting auction. Uh, I called for bids. No one, no one said anything. A yep. sea of faces. About a hundred yep. people at the yep. auction. Uh, I put in a vendor bid of two point eight million. Yep. Waited. Finally, somebody put up their hand. Keeping in mind, reserves around three. Vendor bid of two point eight. Somebody puts up their hand, and I'm watching the hand go up, and I'm waiting for them to say something. And what did they say? Three point five. So it was game on with on the, the market. It was game on with the first bid, Gary. On the market, Phil. And we went on. Did you say the selling price, Gary? Yeah, I did. Five, Five million, million and fifteen thousand dollars. Two million and fifteen over the reserve. That's not bad going. Not but bad going. I have to tell you, Gary, buying that shop yep. at that price yep. has to really be about being a local person, which it want, was. Yeah. wanting to be able to say that shop is mine because. I'm not sure how that stacks well, up. Well, Phil, there's something special about it. And you know what? I have no doubt that that will be, in retrospect, probably a fair and reasonable purchase. At the time, right now, it's kind of hard to reconcile. But that's what's going on in that strip, Phil. It's a very magical little king's way. And, and I think it linked in with the coronation beautifully, Phil. If ever there was an argument as to why one should always auction their property, not because you're going to sell it for 66% over the reserve, yep. but because... Where there are two people yes. that want something, the reason is often not about economics. No. And if we relate this to, say, the housing market, you know, you can have a house which you can say, look, all the comparative sales analysis says that the house is worth 2.5 million. Absolutely. Right? Just as an example. But on the day of the auction, um, a next door neighbour might be bidding or somebody whose mother, father, sister, brother lives around the corner and they specifically want to be in that property, yep. sometimes you can get these wild variations in value because value is often not just about what is the value of the land and the bricks and mortar, but why does somebody want it? Well, we're big believers in the auction system. As you know, Philip, we sell plenty of uh, properties other ways as well because some vendors say, look, we want a private sale, we want an expression of interest or tender. That's fine. We have processes for that. But... Phil, let's face it, we've had too many auctions that have just gone through the roof to not suggest that that's too a great path many, Gary, to go down. Too many, Gary. Uh, too many. One of those was in the PN Highway, Brighton East, Phil. We were expecting uh, somewhere between 1-2 and 1-3-2 or thereabouts. We had someone express some interest before the auction of perhaps putting an offer at the top of the range or beyond. Uh, it wasn't a documented final offer, Phil, but it was discussed and the vendors just said, look, 
We've been here for almost 50 years. We'll just let it run to auction. Yes. It ran to auction, fill it with four bidders and sold for an undisclosed amount. I believe you did an excellent more. job there, oh, thank Gary. Thank you very much. Do you mind if I just it? talk about a property that we sold on Saturday, Gary, in yep. what is really the number one street of Elstonwick, which yes. is Elizabeth Street. Oh, it's love the it. number one street in Elstonwick. Unless you live in another street and I'm talking to you and your street yeah. could also be the number one street. But if we assume that everybody believes Elizabeth Street's yes. the number one street, we had the most delightful... Um, situation yeah. there on Saturday. We did a great experience. Our Rachel. vendor, delightful yeah. woman, absolutely delightful and smart, and and, Sharp. and her delightful brother. Yes, uh, were uh, uh, and they will remain nameless, but yes. prominent car part of an iconic family. Philip, prominent, well known prominent iconic car dealers. In the, in the now, I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you have a real estate agent <laughs> negotiating <laughs> with a car dealer, yep. um, the magic that oh, comes yeah. out, the conversation, oh, yeah. the, yeah. The, the, the dialogue. The, the yeah. dialogue yeah. is incredible oh, because yeah. it's it memorable. Was, it yeah. was like, you know, watching Fust and Parry, you know, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it was one step forward, two steps back. It was like yeah. it was like a dance. It was a dance, wasn't and it? Phil? Yeah. She was exceptional. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it was like actually, you know, if you watch it, an incredible tennis game where yeah. the rally is just long yeah. Yeah. and hard. Uh, it was just for and us, it was a beautiful experience. It was. Um, Every line that we had, there was a counter line that correct. just smashed us to the floor, wasn't it, Phil? Correct, but correct. It was she, was, she was magnificent, yeah. and we did pick up some great dialogue. We did. We, we did. She could give team. us a good training session, I reckon, uh, the lady there. Uh, Philip, let's, uh, that was a great result. Well done. Well done to the buyer who, yeah, again, buyer. really, you know, just sort of didn't quite rock up on the day, but had seen it once briefly, thought about it, but wasn't that, you know, necessarily committed to it, but came on the day and decided, you know what? Maybe this could be a great future home yep. for us and uh, stood, up, stood up and performed. Uh, well done to Leo Samuel, who sold number 58B Reed Street in Murrumbina. A great address, great property. Uh, and this one is actually disclosed. Sold for $1,586,000, uh, well above the range, Philip, uh, and a uh, number of parties going for that one. Let's move into Sunday, Philip. We had some fun on Sunday. Regent Street in Elstonwick, of course. Uh, very, very popular, undisclosed, but uh, a lot of fun. Look, there's no better street to buy into than the street where the neighbours wait. When the property's knocked down, they run to the buyer and they go, welcome to the street where your neighbours. How lovely that is that? That is really lovely and that happened in Regent Street. I presume yeah. you're talking about Regent Street. Gary, uh, performing really well in Elstonwick at the moment. Yep. We had sale in St George's Road, yes, a sale in, in Elizabeth Street, a sale in Bertram Regent Street, Street yeah. Bertram Street. Yeah. Uh, so Elstonwick and another one is, coming is, up, St George's Road. It's a great favourite suburb of ours. Um, yep. Lovely, uh, we had this lovely situation where the underbidder from Regent Street, which was yes. a two-storey townhouse, yes. um, moved on to an auction that we had in Heather Road yes. in Caulfield South. Yes, now, indeed. Now, two completely different properties, Yep. Uh, but the underbidder from Regent Street, yep. we moved them on to our auction, uh, the next auction in Heather Road. Which sold for $1,630,000. Yes, and they were yeah. the underbidders there as well. Yep. So uh, just interesting that, that we all think... Uh, when I say we, buyers, sellers, real estate agents, you know, you think a, a buyer's got a specific property type in mind, yep. but the Regent Street property and the Heather Road property, completely different properties, and yet they were underbidders on both. So 26. we certainly thank them for their competition. Well done, and, and uh, sorry you missed out, but we'll get you one. You one, one home close to the one you're going to buy. Uh, 26A Spring Road, Caulfield South, Phil, uh, another auction that we've talked about briefly, sold for 1420 with uh, a number of parties competing. Look, I want to talk about a sale that probably encapsulates the great system uh, of Gary Pure and Associates. That's the, the sale of 13 Taronga Road, <clears> Melbourne <throat> East. Uh, now, well done to Lamore Herskovitz, who has persisted with this property. It took a little bit longer to sell than originally uh, contemplated, but the vendor stuck with her, and Lamore, of course, very determined as she is. But this is a home that sold. Now, have a look at this, Phil. Uh, in Malvern, listed by our St Kilda office, sold by an agent in Bentley to a buyer from Baldwin for a vendor who's in Jordan. The country uh, Jordan. How wow. about that? Wow, that's for a, that, some geography. That eh? is a round robin Isn't of that a great not story. only geography, but a round robin of how the team 
whilst yep. they might reside in different offices, yep. work collectively as one. And so, how well we work together to the benefit of our clients. So uh, that's a great story I wanted to talk about. Phil, we've got some great offerings coming up. Uh, we can't wait for the weekend. We're not prepared to do so. We've got auctions, of course, uh, already uh, in a couple of days in Charnwood Road, this wonderful block of apartments. And I just parked outside there the other day to a, had an event close by. And uh, I thought, what a great looking property this is. Tell us a bit about it. Well, Gary, not uh, not uh, it's very difficult to find a small block of four uh, and uh, investment blocks of apartments are fabulous things to have in the portfolio. This is a block of four, um, beautiful older style apartments refurbished throughout. That is just the greatest property because Charnwood is the most beautiful street, tree-lined street, and you've got all of the trams and shops on your doorstep. We're going to kick off at 10.30, Philip, not there, but at 10.30 we're going to kick off in Dandong Road in Caulfield North. This is 102 at 462 to 464 Dandong Road. Jeremy Rosens starts off a busy weekend. Well, the wonderful Rafi Joffe, who has had the great pleasure of selling the great majority of this building. He's only got a few to go, uh, but it's essentially a brand new building, Gary. And uh, Rafi is putting to the market there two bedrooms, two bathrooms, together with two basement car spaces in a building that is walking distance to Glenferry Road and the Malvern train station. Indeed. Let alone the trams, of course, on Dandong Road. We're in Seven Southern on Saturday with our auctions. Philip, at 11.30, we're going to be in Murphy Street, South Yarra, Lee or Samuel auctions. Well, this Murphy's Law, Gary, would say that this is going to sell well, and so. as it should, because it's a great address. You know, you've got Turak Road, you've got um, the Royal Botanic Gardens on your doorstep. This is two bedrooms, one bathroom, one car space. Uh, it's a it's a quite a substantial size apartment, Gary. And of course, Murphy Street is right up there with one of the best addresses in Melbourne. There are those, Phil, that say, oh, one bedroom apartments, you shouldn't be auctioning them. You know, we've had that debate. Don't yes. auction a one bedroom apartment, it's too small, people need to buy subject to finance, you know, it's not worth it, the investment's too great. Well, for those people that say that, why don't you get yourself over to 11 at 41 to P and Highway at 11.30 a.m. and see if you're right or we're right in our belief of auctioning one bedroom One apartments. bedroom, one bathroom, one car space, a lovely balcony. This is a really good size apartment, Gary, because it's got a separate kitchen uh, and also a very large bathroom. So look out for that one, viewers. I reckon that's a rip snorter. It's very popular, Philip, and I think my uncle used to live uh, or actually own in that particular building. So Well, your uncle back. was a very wealthy man, Gary, so there'd be very few streets or very few buildings in Australia where he wouldn't have owned something. Sadly, I think that was his only investment. Field, but uh, never mind. God bless him anyway. Uh, let's move on uh, to Heatherbray Avenue in Caulfield, Phil. This is a ripper. Gary, single story villa heaven. Um, although we describe it as a villa, but I'm now calling these houses yeah, because ultima yep. ultimately we're selling these to all age groups, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, um, a, a off street car parking for a couple of cars. That is a really, really good property. Lock up garage, everything that opens and shuts. And Heather Bray is a perfect location. Uh, that's one of your only two auctions on the weekend, Phil. Uh, hard to get a gig as an auctioneer here now, isn't there? There's I eight auctioneers. You, there's a lot of competition, God, Gary. They're what. breathing down my neck. Oh, are they ever? Yep. That's for sure. Uh, Phil, at 12.30, but they're not eating the same mints as me, so it's okay. Phil, at 12.30, I'm going to meet you. In Barclay Street in St Kilda for this terrific offering. What a great Gary, location. This is, a, this is a, a house to renovate. I mean, it's very, very livable as it yep. is, so you can move in there, but it's a house to renovate. Or it's a wonderful parcel of land, 507 square metres with a right of way to the rear. Uh, that is all about opportunity, Gary. And uh, I think the opportunity there to create a fabulous home one way or another, is immense. Opportunity and location. When opportunity knocks, be ready to open the door. Indeed, Phil. Uh, now, talking about opening the door, we're going to be opening the door at 1.30pm at a property in Alma Road that actually was the former home of Director Jeremy Rosens. Do you know what? He lived in this and owned this property when he was a young man yep. and single at the time. And, oh, then, yeah. and then Mishy's lovely wife moved in. If the walls um, had, he had uh, you know, Well, ex ears, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Well, now, the good news is he hasn't lived there for a very long yes. time, which means... It's been you know, sanitised. The, re the yeah. residual... The residual... Um, uh, filth. <laughs> the residual <laughs> grit yeah. filth. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, keep in yeah. mind, he was a young, wild man yeah, yeah. when he lived there. It's like a, you know, the service station. How yeah. they need a certain amount of time. 
to cleanse them. That's it. It's sort That's of like a rehabilitate. Yeah. yeah. No, there's yeah. a term for it. I'll remember. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, had the Environmental yeah. Protection Authority do a yeah, thorough right. investigation into this apartment, and they've given a tick saying that there is it's no not, yeah. DNA Quarantine, is it? of it Jeremy yeah. Rosen's yeah, exactly in the building right. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But let's talk about it because it's a massive apartment: three bedrooms, two bathrooms, uh, and a car space, uh, and walking distance to the Alma Village tram in Dandong Road. I love these 60s stroke 70s buildings because they're big, they're secure, and they're solidly built. Three bedrooms and two bathrooms, Phil. You yep. don't get many of those for under no, a million you, dollars. You do alone not, in this price range. You do not. Indeed, Phil, we're going to bring the curtain down on a busy Saturday with Graham Callan auctioning this wonderful and affordable property in Murrumbina Road. One bedroom, one bathroom, one car space, uh, and that's a really good size with an alfresco terrace, two alfresco terraces, Gary. You have a very light schedule on Saturday. Not so Sunday, Philip. You've got a much busier day, but we'll let you have a little sleep in and start at 12.30 because at 11.30, Leo Samuel is kicking off in Neerham Road. What a great villa uh, or home again. I've got to drop villa from my vocabulary. You don't have to. A, a great home. Uh, this, of course, is three bedrooms, uh, two bathrooms, a lock-up garage, Gary, uh, your own courtyard garden, a really nice home. And then we roll out Mr Kingston in whatever you're going to be wearing this Sunday. We'll kick you off in bed. Amber Road at 12.30. Gary, I don't mind starting at 12.30. And keep yep. in mind, it's Mother's Day on 12 oh, uh, uh, on um, Sunday. So what are you doing with your mum? Don't forget. I haven't worked it out yet, Gary, but no doubt. Is I'll she prepared to see you? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, well, I think the restraining order finishes yeah, so. on Saturday. I think so. You so so there, is yeah. a, there is a good chance. But yeah. Bamber Road, if we go back there, is 314 square metres of land. A really great opportunity to buy a first home or an investment. Two bedrooms, one bathroom. Plenty of off-street car parking, Gary. Uh, and the, uh, the land component there is considerable. Well, some of your auctions are long, Phil. If this is a long one, you don't have to worry about it because your 130 auction is just around the corner, also in Caulfield South in Narrowong Road. And what a great address Narrowong Road is and what a beautiful house. I mean, this is just a fine example of just moving into a house and never having to spend another cent. Four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, double lock-up garage, really quite stunning back garden. And there's not a cent to spend. Just move in, get on with life and love your experience of waking up in a beautiful home. Happiness is a beautiful period home, Phil, and there's none happier or more beautiful than the property that we're offering on Sunday afternoon in Wilgar Street, St Kilda Reese. I'm going to come and join you at this auction, oh, Phil. Oh, that's Looking forward so to it. good of you, Gary. No, my pleasure. Uh, you, Think the, nothing the, of the, it. The things that you will do for uh, me and our clients, just magnificent. I'm prepared to. Uh, this is a beautiful house and a shout out to the vendors who've transformed this home so brilliantly well. It's got the period facade and some of the period details that we all love, but more importantly it's got a drop dead gorgeous renovation to the rear uh, you know you go through to the kitchen meals family room which opens to an alfresco area and even your own putting green go online and have a look at me do the video there but more importantly come along with some money and buy that property and you will live happily ever after. Indeed, and if you happen to miss that on that one, you can help us bring down the curtain on a busy Sunday in Main Street, Elstwick. What a terrific address this well, is. Well, we love Main Street, Gary, um, and this is a wonderful home because it, it is four bedrooms, three bathrooms, a lock-up garage, uh, so much to love there, including the beautiful parquetry floors. Uh, but Main Street's a great address because it's in the epicentre of Elstonwick, but it's a no-through road. So, Indeed. Um, you know, no traffic coming down that street other than the neighbours and their guests. Absolutely, Phil. A couple of feature properties before we go. Uh, one of those is yet another block of apartments, maybe a hundred block, a hundred and ten or thereabouts. Gary, 110. I think this is our 110. Uh, and I love the look of this one. What a great position. Well, Gary, I mean, have a look at some of those photos. You can see the beach, you can see the city. Uh, if you're standing on the roof of this building, uh, it's 759 metres of prime uh, Elwood land with the beach literally on your doorstep. But this is seven one bedroom apartments. They're all extra large. Uh, some of the best one bedroom apartments that you'll see together with a builder's own apartment at the front, which is a three bedroom, two bathroom, massive builder's own penthouse, if you yep. like. Uh, and what a great opportunity. We've had some people that have said, listen, I'm just going to move into that apartment. Yep. I'll have the others as investments. Uh, but if you want to, if you want to future proof your the next generation, you buy a block of apartments, your grandchildren will love you for your cleverness. Absolutely, Phil. Uh, look, you don't get much better looking homes than this one coming up uh, that we're going to review in St George's Road, Elstonwick. And I remember I mentioned before, I used to deliver the newspaper in St George's Road and I used to love all of the beautiful period homes and thought, 
look, wouldn't it be great one day to live in one of them? Well, I wasn't able to do that, but I am able to sell them, Phil, uh, and I'm looking forward to selling this one together with you as the auctioneer, Daniel Peer and Arlene Joffe and the team involved in 46 St George's. Gary, else to be- what a thumper. Uh, this is a magnificent house in so many ways. First of all, the facade is incredible. Uh, but the floor plan's fabulous, fully renovated throughout. Beautiful garden, both front, side and rear. Off-street car parking from a very easy right of way at the rear. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms, plenty of off-street car parking, Gary. Uh, and of course, St George's Road. Would you rate St George's Road as the number two street? Oh, I think so. I think yeah. Pretty safe, yeah, so Elizabeth yeah. Street number one, uh, St George's Road number two, yep. you'd rate Allison and Allison, Seymour pretty Shuba, high. Downshire, Shuba, Downshire yeah. Riddell. Yep. Um, you know, we've actually we've actually got so many good streets in Elston Week, it's yeah. hard to choose the ab- top ab- 10. Absolutely. Uh, Phil, we're going to uh, finalise with this property in Lansdowne Road, which had the most outstanding attendance for its uh, opening on the weekend. We might be needing to review our price guide there, Phil, uh, because this home has had people knocking the doors down to buy it, Phil. Knocking, well, hopefully they weren't knocking the doors oh, down, yeah. Gary, yeah. Uh, because that would be that would be disappointing for yeah. our vendor. Yeah. Uh, but I can see why it's so popular. Lansdowne's a great address. Yeah. Um, this has got really good accommodation and really good garden areas. So I can see, you know, it's hard if you've got less than one and a half million dollars to spend yep. uh, it's hard to get something in the epicenters of these great areas Absolutely. so so i understand to a degree why it's been so popular that's a big wrap on this week's gptv there's lots happening out there the weather might be cold but the market certainly if not hot definitely warm and if you wanted to sell this year if you want to do it winter when there's less around give us a call but we are planning our spring auctions as well so plenty happening out there in the wonderful plenty, world of real estate not plenty Plenty. Yeah, yeah, plenty. Plenty. Yeah, plenty happening out there in the wonderful world of real estate. Look forward to seeing you next week on GPTV. I'm Gary Pierre. I'm Philip Kingston. Have a beautiful week.